man, there is so much stuff around here, and I have no idea what it does. In fact, I'm pretty sure that that's a Pac-Man ghost. Hey guys, welcome to Film Lennon, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning you good. And just because I've enjoyed my little break from flash effects these past two weeks, I thought we might just tackle one more before we head back. So here's a request. XA7MDQ8 asked, Please, Iron Man HUD. Straight to the point. I like that. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor against a black backdrop. I'm sure everyone will enjoy the fact that I do not, I repeat, do not, use a green screen this week. Thank you, thank you. No, no, it's my fault. But in all seriousness, guys, you can use a black sheet, a hoodie, whatever you want, as long as it fills this dead space right here in the shot. And it's dark enough because we'll be masking out most of it anyway. You'll also need to download the Iron Man widget pack in the description that features over 30 different bits and pieces in total. Perfect for custom building or your own Iron Man style HUD crap. I'll even throw in the ones I've made at no additional cost. But wait, there's more. We've even got some sounds I found in line in there too. So what are you waiting for? Dial 1-800-EGGHEAD. That's 1-800-EGGHEAD and ask about our penis enlargement cream. Or we could just do the tutorial. Yeah, let's do that. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects. I've got my footage set up on the comp and ready to go. Our first step here is to track our footage. Now if we take a look at my footage, you'll see I've purposely moved my head around back and forth and looking up and down. I've done this to show you that this effect can still work with these kind of extremes. Having said that, I do recommend staying as still as possible, but if you don't, it's still going to work. We're going to be tracking our footage in Mocha today, so you'll need at least After Effects CS6 for this to work. If you don't, you'll just have to track the position, rotation and scale within After Effects. In order to track, let's select our footage, head up to Animation and select Track in Mocha AE. This will open Mocha of course. When it starts up, it'll load a new project screen. Just check over those settings and make sure they match your footage. And then click OK. From there, let's head up and grab this tool. This is called the B-Spline. It's a bit like the pen tool. So we'll head down to our footage and draw a rough mask around the eyes, eyebrows and the bridge of the nose, like so. When you reach the end of the mask, right click on your start point to close it. From there, let's make sure all of these parameters are checked down here, that way we get the track covered from all angles. We'll then head over here and click this button right here to start tracking. Once you're done, you'll be able to look over your tracked mask like so. Pretty cool, huh? Let's now export that data to After Effects. We'll head down here, click Export Tracking Data. We'll then select Transform Data from the menu and click Copy to Clipboard. We'll then head back to After Effects, jump up to Layer and add a new solid. And I'm going to name mine Tracking Data or Data, that'll do. And let's make sure we're on the first frame of the comp because we're going to hit Edit and then hit Paste. I'm going to quickly head up to Effect generate and add a grid just so you can see that our solid is now moving perfectly in sync with our tracking data this isn't a step in the tutorial i just wanted to show you looks cool our next step is to add a bit of a vignette around our footage so it looks a little bit more iron manish as you can see from this example you don't really see much of the face beyond the chin and the cheeks so let's start by turning off that solid we'll then head down and select that footage layer next we'll head up and grab the ellipse tool We'll then draw a mask around our actor's head. You can play around with the mask expansion and the mask feathering settings, or just adjust the mask manually until it gets to the point where you like it. This bit is very much individual based on your particular shot. There, looks much better. Okay, we've tracked our head and made it all pretty like. Now let's add some widgets. Time to bring in some HUD animated widget thingies. I don't know what to call them, do you? Now guys, I've made a couple of these myself, and I got some more from a YouTube channel called Graphic in Motion, so check them out guys. I've left the download links for both in the description. We'll cover making your own widgets in a later episode. So I'm going to start with this eyepiece part right here. So I'll drag that from the project window into our comp. We'll make it 3D by clicking here. We'll also click this little sun icon here called Collapse Transformation. This will enable the 3D spacing I've made in the eyepieces comp work in this one. If I solo the layer and rotate it, you can see that it's layered in 3D to give it some depth, so let's drag it into position. We'll rotate if you want, and once you're happy, let's parent it to our solid layer. If we preview the comp, our eyepiece now moves in sync with our face, 
And better yet, since I included the eyebrows in our track, when I raise them up, it pushes our scale up and really emphasizes the animation. But as you can see, when I tilt my head down, it does go off the rails a little bit. Not to worry. All we have to do to fix that is head to the point before I just tilt my head down, hit R to bring up our rotation, hit the stopwatch, scrub forward until the point where my head is completely tilted down, We'll then adjust the orientation controls to make it look like the eyepiece is actually following my eye line. So we'll scrub back on the timeline to the point where we're just about to tilt down, hit P to bring up our position controls, hit the stopwatch, we'll then adjust the position to marry up with our eye just a little bit better. If we check out a preview, that looks way better. So let's add some more and follow the exact same process. Add your widget, make it 3D, move it into place, scale, rotate, move it back or forward in Z-space, wherever you like. Parent it to our solid, or if you like, parent it to the eyepiece, and skip the adjustment animation entirely. As you can see in this example, I've still decided to do the position adjustment and the rotation adjustment, but I'm kinda anal that way. I just had to get it looking just right. Much better. Rinse and repeat this process as many times as you like. Fill that screen totally full of crap. Nobody knows what it means anyway. Now guys, as you can see, I've skipped ahead and added a few more elements. I've done them the exact same way, so there's no need to show you again and again and again. Our next step is to give our layers a bit of depth with some blur and glow action. So let's grab our glow first, head up to effect, stylize and add a glow. Now since we have a bunch of different layers at different sizes and depths, you'll have to play with both the radius and the threshold to find that sweet spot on each of the layers. It's all down to personal preference here gang. Now you may have noticed that this layer is completely white, so let's change that. Head up to Effect, Color Correction, and add CC Toner. Now what's cool about CC Toner is we can add different colors to our footage layer based on the opacity levels. So for example, if we want to change the highlights, we simply grab the eyedropper tool and pick our blue color here. And if we want to change our midtones, grab the eyedropper tool again, and we'll change it to a yellow. Already done. Now from there, we can copy and paste that effect on all the other layers that are currently white. And if we like to, we can change some of those colors up for a bit of variety. I also cheated a little bit here and I copied the glow as well. Our next step is to add our blur. So let's head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add CC cross blur. Now the cool thing about this blur setting is it actually enhances the glow. It even has its own transfer mode so you can select add, blend or screen so you can actually control how much your glow is affected. Then you simply adjust each radius to get the amount of blur you want. Once again guys, this is totally down to your personal preference to how blurry you want each part. Just remember, the further that widget is from the actor's face, the blurrier it should be since the actor's face is our focus point. We'll then just cheat a little by copying and pasting the effect and then just adjusting it on each layer. Now that we've got all those done, let's check out a preview. It's looking pretty good, but we need a bit of color correction on that face, so let's do that. Now this one's a bit of a two-step process. First off, we're going to select our footage layer, head up to Effect, Color Correction, and add a Curves. Since I've got a bit of an aqua vibe going, I'm going to bump up both the blue and the green, just to the point where I'm happy with the end result. Finally, our last step is to add some light fall off from the glowing eyes of the Iron Man mask. To do that, let's head up to Layer and add a new adjustment layer. From there, let's grab the pen tool and draw a mask in the rough shape of maybe a pair of sunglasses just around the eyes and the tip of the eyebrows, like so. We'll then head up to Effect, Color Correction and add Exposure. We're just going to bump that exposure up to the point where it just blows out our eyes just a little bit. Just a little bit, guys. My setting here is set to 1.30, so I'm not going crazy. We'll then collapse down the feather settings for that mask and feather it out around 50 pixels. Now, let's check out a preview of our final shot. Done! Add up all of those steps and you get something like this. Man, there is so much stuff around here, and I have no idea what it does. In fact, I'm pretty sure that that's a Pac-Man ghost. So that's my take on an easy Iron Man heads-up display. No third-party plugins, no green screen, and you can use all those parts to custom make your own widgets. BAM! The old fork in the eye. Uh, actually, I was gonna say, pretty neat, huh? But whatever, I guess that works. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and share it. If you're new here, give that subscribe button a headbutt of justice. For previews of upcoming episodes, hit me up on Twitter and Facebook. And until next week where I may repulse you,
Keep learning. <laughs>